um, exciting and I'm very honored to be the uh, Flora director here at Four Seasons Hotel Singapore. Um, I am not new to Four Seasons. Um, I'm very lucky to work with Four Seasons for almost 15 years, uh, starting at their property in Maranouchi in Tokyo, which was just almost neighborless to my one of my actually my first shop. Um, one of I have now I think 12th floral shop, 12th floral shop locations in Japan. Um, but it was just next to my first location. Um, later on, um, I've been doing uh, for the last three years uh, four seasons in Seoul, where we have a very big setup with a flower shop as well, where we do all the banquet flowers, uh, public area and wedding. Uh, in the same fashion as we are doing here uh, in Singapore. And also in Kyoto, uh, Four Seasons Kyoto is again a totally different, uh, very uh, traditional Japanese uh, property. So I'm very excited about this new uh, collaboration here and how we can uh, develop a lot of exciting uh, public flowers as well as for banquet uh, and wedding. Um, I prefer to make flowers as I speak so uh, I, will, uh, I will show you, um, I will make a, a bouquet um, of flowers while I will uh, continue to uh, talk a little bit more um, about the uh, collaboration here uh, in Singapore. Um, <coughs> the bouquet I will make here is uh, thought about as a I mean, wedding inspired um, first, we talk about making a wedding bouquet, but it'd be a little bit boring to show you all a very small bouquet. So I'm going a bit more, uh, more big scale. Um, I have uh, worked with flowers for many years, uh, over 25 years, where uh, 20 of them is in Japan. Um, so it's a little bit, I uh, lived more than half of my life in Japan, so it's a little bit um, out of the ordinary uh, story. Um, but after finishing my uh, floral studies uh, in Copenhagen, um, I am from Denmark, um, just out of Copenhagen, a very small uh, city called Gauer. It's quite cute because all the houses are yellow with thatch roof out to the sea. It's an old fisherman uh, village. It's quite um, uh, Hans Christian Andersen-ish, if I'm sure you all know who he is. Um, so after I finished my studies uh, as a florist. Uh, I went to um, Japan just for a small visit. Uh, my big dream was always to work with flowers. Um, and I have a, a, always a, a fun fact and also how uh, <coughs> there is a backside of floristry which is it's very hard to be a florist. It's hard work. It's not all this beauty as you see here. Um, there's a backside to it. And um, when I started um, my apprenticeship, I went to like a, a, a school that's just dedicated for practicing flowers. And there was 28 girls and me. <laughs> I had a wonderful time at that school. Um, but the fun part of this was that um, the first day the teacher would say, how many of you guys want to have your own flower shop? And everyone, 28 people including me, was raising their hand, everybody wanted to have a flower shop. And after three years, the same question was raised, and only me and one more was raising the hand to want to have a flower shop. So that's that's how hard it is to actually get up at four o'clock every morning, you know, get the shop ready to go. Um, you show all the pretty things, but all the hard things is is a backside to it. But it's very rewarding, and for me, like a day to day where I can be here in front of you guys, show all these uh, beautiful things we have made, is it makes it uh, makes it world worthwhile. Um, I'm starting a little bit of made up bouquet with uh, the beautiful peonies. There's a nice smell of that. There's some bouvardia, some very beautiful uh, spray roses um, as well. So I came to Japan just after finishing um, my internship. My big dream was to go on a cruise ship and make flowers because I heard that was the big thing. Um, <laughs> But as I applied and was only 19, they told me to write back when I was 23, 25. So instead, I had the opportunity to uh, go to Japan. And I set uh, one year off to go to Japan. And now, 20 years later, <laughs> I'm still there. Um, so obviously, um, I, um, I like Japan very much. Um, 
it's been an amazing journey uh, for me uh, in Japan. So um, I basically found a very good uh, partner to begin with, a flower shop that I worked with for seven years. And within those seven years, I opened two shops in my own name uh, while working for uh, this company. And in 2005, um, I decided to uh, make the Nicola Bergman Flowers a Design Company. And in 2005, we were seven people. We actually had our opening breakfast at the Four Seasons Hotel in Maranouchi. And we were seven people uh, and had two locations. And now we are full-time employees, over 200 florists, and about similar over 100 part-timers. And we have in total, um, apart from flower shops, also other businesses. So close to 300 people and more than 20 locations in total. Also doing, I have become recently a jewelry designer as well, where I have four jewelry shops. Um, it's called Natua and Nicola Bergman. Natua is same as nature in English, just without the E, that's Danish uh, for, for nature. Um, so we have had a lot of, um, a lot of fun uh, in Japan um, to set up uh, flower shops and events for, for many, many years. I always um, like to talk about the journey in Japan because uh, it's not been easy, but it's been very steady growing. So it's never been a big thing from day one. It's been something that um, has growing little by little um, over the years. Um, you can later on see, I have some catalogs over along the wall where you can see some of the events and companies that uh, we work with and make uh, flowers for. And the bouquet here is, is for sure my favorite. I love to make the bouquets because it's a uh, is the one that's the most difficult for all of you to, uh, to what do you say, to copy. Uh, it's, it's for sure the most, uh, it's for sure the most uh, hard thing to, um, uh, to make. I'm very into this um, solid, solid shapes of flowers. So um, I like there is a sort of very hard silhouette to um, the arrangements. I'm sure you can see that also from uh, the different uh, centerpieces that I have created. However, uh, details for me is everything. Um, it is my concept and my belief is that the flowers that I create needs to have, it needs to bring a moment of surprise. It needs to bring a moment of uh, communication. So if you have seen something here today and feel like you wanna go somewhere else and talk about it, then uh, it's you have made my dream come true. Because that's, that's the whole, idea of many of the things that it can create communication um, and how I do that is um, the, the, the use of materials um, in Japan is for sure for many many years been the mix between the Eastern and the Western materials um, from some of the books um, you can see that I'm using a lot of branches a lot of weird like twist and turn uh, sticks and, and berries and all sorts of uh, different materials to make um, the arrangements um, a little bit more um, different. So here I will show you another thing that we often consider is if you look at this bouquet now that I have made it's, um, it's got a sort of like a a soft silhouette to it, it's a very solid shape. It's, um, it's, uh, there's not so much contrast uh, in the bouquet yet. Now we'll place all the, uh, these uh, leaves, we call them lemon leaves. And as, you, as you enter these, uh, these leaves all the way around the bouquet, you will see how there'll be so much more contrast. The center of the colors will stand out so much more. Um, it's something that, in general, you don't think too much of, but there's so many ways when you make flowers to suddenly change the appearance in the very end. So let's say I put very loose uh, grasses and green here. 
you'll get sort of a very country-like feel. Um, when I put these more harder leaves in, as I do now, you'll get more con contrast, and you get more like a solid and impact uh, feel to, uh, to the bouquet. For these kind of uh, bouquets, when I uh, show here in front of all of you, I always use these solid leaves because it stands up more. So it's all about, um, all about contrast and how you can uh, change the, the final appearance of uh, each work. Um, today we have uh, displayed five uh, arrangements here uh, behind you. They all have um, a very different uh, appearance. It's been very exciting to uh, work with some of the there's not that many local local flowers, but at least from from uh, from this region. But for sure, all the orchids is very exciting. The strong colors of the orange and the dark purple, uh, I think, is um, is very exciting. In general, like coming into Singapore, I'm sure that I don't know if for you uh, guys being here all the time, but for me coming into Singapore is just for sure the the most green city uh, in the world. I believe <coughs> arriving is quite inspiring for me to, to see all the, um, the plants and the greenery uh, that there is around. Can you see the difference from before until now that the, the, the content of the bouquet is standing out way more than it did before? I'm using a, a technique that's called uh, the spiral way of making a bouquet, so all the stems are going the same direction. Um, if I were to make this complete upside down and out straight up, uh, these flowers would start to break slowly because that you can uh, hold that many and, and um, still get the shape without the flowers start um, breaking. Um, while doing this technique, um, I can at the same time, if you can see, my, my fingers can hardly uh, reach each other anymore. And, that's the, and the flowers are uh, put this way into the spiral, you can really, really go very big because the flowers don't fall out. So it's a technique all, often used when making um, bouquets. In fact, it's the only technique that we use uh, making a hand piped bouquets like this. You can feel free afterwards to uh, take pictures with this. Also, take it off and feel how heavy it is. It's quite <laughs> surprising, uh, actually, when you pick it up, how uh, how much weight there is to uh, to a big uh, bouquet of flowers. So please feel free to, uh, to take it up. I always joke that I become very silent at the very end making a bouquet because it's, it's quite a, a bit of effort to put in the very end to uh, keep the, uh, the perfect perfect shape. So here is about uh, probably a bit over 100 stems um, of flowers. Um, not that many different variations, but I wanted to make this very sort of uh, sweet Wedding ish. Could be nice for a proposal too, no? For, uh, for a wedding. <coughs> so, another thing that most people don't think much of is just in the details of just tying the string on the bouquets, not just tying it. There's so much detail into everything to doing it the perfect way. If you see, I haven't even tied it yet, but I can already let go. So that's a technique of how you put the string around. If you just put it on normally, this will spring open already. But there is a technique to it, everything. Um, I sort of, I layer the, uh, the string and I pull down each way, so the string is sort of going together to the most, uh, the skinniest point um, of, the, uh, of the bouquet. It all looks and sounds simple, but uh, it's quite, uh, difficult to get it uh, perfect. Even after working over 20 years with flowers, I still sort of find all the way new sort of combinations and new ways to uh, um, to put.
put the flowers together and then it was the perfect uh, balance like this. What do you think? <laughs>